In this video, we will review the proper termination procedure of a System 1850 Shielded Twisted Pair Fire Alarm and Voice Communication MI cable using the Pyrotonax Pyropack Termination Kit. Shielded Twisted Pair Copper Sheath MI Communication Cables are classified by UL and ULC as 2-hour fire resistive and the improper termination of the cable can jeopardize its integrity and reliability. Before we begin, let's double check that your Pyro Pack kit contains all the necessary items you will need in order to terminate the cable correctly. Inside your kit, you should find two spacer disc and insulating sleeve assemblies, red, black, brown, two brass gland connectors, two brass self-threading pots, two torque tags, two packets of mastic sealing compound, two drain wire ring assemblies, one brass bushing, and one popsicle stick. Also make sure that you have all the tools required in order to perform the termination. A Pyrotonax Sheathmaster tool, an MI crimp tool, a three-quarter inch Pyrotonax Pyro Potter tool, a Pyrotonax drain wire tool, and a Pyrotonax hand vise. In addition, check that you also have the following set of standard tools in your kit. Do not proceed until you do. For this demonstration, we will terminate the end of shielded twisted pair MI cable inside of a fire alarm control panel. First, ensure that the end of the MI cable is straight for approximately the tail length required, plus 3 inches, 7.5 centimeters. Using the hand vise to hold the cable in place if needed, cut the end of the MI cable square with a hacksaw and file the end smooth using a flat file. Now, place a mark on the sheath for the tail length required, 12 inches, 30 centimeters, being standard, as this will be the length of sheath to be removed. Remember that the longest recommended pigtails for the shielded, twisted pair cable is 12 inches. Also place a second mark, 1 inch, 2.5 centimeters, behind the first mark. The sheath will be stripped back to the first mark, exposing the inner sheath. The second mark is only used to position the hand vise for final stripping. Now slide the gland connector onto the cable. The gland connector is an assembly which consists of three parts, the gland nut, the compression sleeve, and the gland body. For correct installation, the gland nut is placed first, followed by the compression sleeve, and finally, the gland body. It is easier to place the gland connector on the cable with all the pieces assembled. Do not tighten the gland connector at this point. Next, strip the outer copper sheath off the MI cable. Gripping the MI cable with the hand vise and using the Sheathmaster stripping tool, begin stripping the outer copper sheath back towards the first mark. For detailed instructions on how to operate the Sheathmaster stripping tool, please refer to the instruction manual that came with the tool or download a copy from nvent.com slash pyrotonax. After the first one half inch, 13 millimeters of the outer sheath has been removed, check the inner copper shield to make sure that the blade did not cut into it. Adjust the blade depth on the stripping tool if necessary to avoid cutting the inner sheath. Now, continue to strip the copper sheath. For final stripping, grip the cable with the hand vise at the second mark, and when the stripping tool touches the edge, it will stop and make a clean cut on the cable sheath at the first mark, thus exposing the inner copper sheath shield. Now, strip the inner shield back to accommodate the drain wire nut. Wipe the shield with a clean dry cloth or rag and insert the brass bushing supplied with the terminating kit into the guide block of the Sheathmaster stripping tool. You will need to rotate your nylon guide block on the tool to accommodate for the larger diameter bushing. Make sure that the bushing aligns with the blade end of the tool and tighten the guide block to lock the bushing in place. Now strip the inner shield until the bushing contacts the outer sheath and turn the handle a full 360 degrees more so that the cutting breaks free. When the tool is removed, 11 30 seconds of an inch of the shield and about 12 inches 30 centimeters of the twisted conductors should be left protruding from the end of the cable. Next, 
clean the cable and remove any copper filings and burrs that may be left from the stripping process. Straighten the conductors and ensure that they are evenly spaced. Wipe clean all of the surfaces, including the conductors, to remove any loose powder and visually inspect the magnesium oxide insulation at the face of the cable for traces of copper filings and burrs. If present, you can remove them with a pick or gently tap them out. But do not blow them out as this can introduce moisture into the end of the cable. When cleaning the conductors, be careful not to remove more powder from the face of the cable than is necessary. Now proceed to install the pot onto the cable with the Pyro Potter tool. Place a mark on the cable 7 16 of an inch back from the end of the outer sheath. You will screw the pot onto the sheath so that the back of the pot aligns with the mark. Insert the 3 quarter inch self-threading pot into the non-threaded end of the Pyro Potter tool with a larger hole of the pot facing outwards and protruding about 5 16 of an inch 8 millimeters past the end. Tighten the screw on the pot with an Allen key ensuring that the screw is tightened onto the knurled end of the pot. Slide the assembly over the exposed conductors, threaded end of Pyro Potter first until it stops at the face of the cable. Screw the gland assembly already on the cable all the way into the threaded end of the Pyro Potter tool and tighten it lightly with your fingers. Turn the Pyro Potter in a clockwise direction while simultaneously applying pressure. This will engage the internal screw thread of the pot onto the outer jacket of the MI cable. Continue rotating the assembly until the end of the outer copper sheath projects 1 8 of an inch, 3 millimeters, inside the pot. To remove the tool, first undo the Allen head screw on the side of the Pyro Potter tool. Then hold the gland assembly firmly in one hand and rotate the tool in a counterclockwise direction. This unlocks the Pyro Potter tool from the gland pot assembly and allows for easy removal. Finally, check the pot. The back of the pot should align with the mark made previously on the outer copper sheath at 7 16 of an inch. Next, install the drain wire nut onto the shield of the MI cable. Insert the drain wire nut into the hex wrench of the drain wire tool with the drain wire down the center. Feed the conductors through the hole in the nut and the center of the drain wire tool. Screw the drain wire nut onto the shield of the MI cable, stopping when the shield is flush with the top of the drain wire nut. Finally, align the drain wire nut wire by turning it to a position 90 degrees from the two conductors. If one end of the cable has already been terminated, you must test the end-to-end -end continuity of the conductors with a continuity tester or multimeter to ensure that each conductor will be terminated with the same color sleeves at both ends. Watch our supporting video, Continuity Test for Detailed Procedure. Now, perform an IR test using a megometer set to 500 volts DC to check the insulation resistance of the cable between the conductors and the inner shield between conductors and from the outer sheath to the shield to ensure that they are free of grounds and shorts. The other cable end must be terminated or sealed in order to perform the test or a low IR reading will result. If unsure on how to perform a correct insulation resistance test using a megometer, please pause this video and watch our supporting video performing an IR test for detailed test procedures and IR test criteria. Note that low IR results indicate that moisture is present in the end of the cable and must be removed before continuing the termination. When IR readings are satisfactory, immediately terminate the end of the MI cable or a delay can cause the IR to drop and the cable must be retested prior to terminating the end. Now ensure that the conductors have been straightened and slide the spacer disc and insulating sleeve subassembly over the conductors, anchoring bead end first. The brown sleeve must go over the drain wire. Next, withdraw the spacer disc and sleeving subassembly slightly to allow the sealing compound to be packed into the pot. Also ensure that the conductors are spaced an equal distance apart from each other and inside the pot. The pot should still be warm if you had to follow a drying out procedure during the IR test. If not, heat the cable 
and then the pot with the propane or MAP gas torch until just warm to the touch before filling it with mastic sealing compound. To keep the compound from being contaminated with foreign matter, press it into the pot with your finger behind the wrapper and continue to fill it up by pressing down from one side only until the drain wire nut is covered. Using the stick provided, tamp the compound down between the pot and the drain wire nut to ensure the cable end beneath the nut is well covered and void of air pockets. Continue filling the pot with compound from one side only until slightly overfilled. Push the spacer disc back into the open end of the pot and gently pull on the PVC sleeve to ensure the anchoring beads are snug against the inside face of the spacer disc. Do not push on the sleeves as it may force them back through the cap and butt against the end of the cable, thus preventing the compound from making an effective seal. Next, crimp the cap onto the pot using the MI crimp tool. Place the pot into the body of the MI crimp tool, making sure that the PVC sleeves, conductors, and drain wire are inserted through the center. The end of the pot with the spacer disc must fit inside the three cone-shaped points on the crimping plate of the MI crimp tool. If needed, hold the MI cable firmly with the hand vise to prevent the crimp tool from turning the pot. Apply even pressure on the spacer disc by turning and tightening the tool until the spacer disc is snugly seated inside the opening of the pot and the cone-shaped points have crimped the side of the pot. This will retain the spacer disc in position and the termination is now complete. It is normal for mastic sealing compound to squeeze at the side of the pot, so just clean it carefully. To end the termination, test the insulation resistance of the cable once again with the megameter set to 500 volts DC to ensure that the cable has been terminated correctly. Again, if unsure on how to perform an IR test, watch our supporting video performing an IR test. Finally, to secure the finished cable to the panel, simply install a user-supplied lock nut onto the gland assembly and slide it into the enclosure. Place a second lock nut on the gland assembly from the inside and tighten it to ensure that the gland is properly grounded. Once the gland nut has been installed in the cabinet or panel, fully tighten the gland nut to the gland body using two wrenches and ensure that the assembly is fully secure. This completes the proper termination of a System 1850 shielded twisted pair fire alarm and voice communication MI cable using the Pyrotinax Pyropack termination kit. For further assistance and product support, please contact NVENT Support at 1-800-545-6258 or visit nvent.com slash pyrotinax.